Welcome back to Get Goods. This is episode number two. In the last video, we looked at creating, or I suppose initializing and cloning repositories. In this video, we're gonna be talking about staging changes for commit, actually committing changes, and then as a little bonus, we are gonna be tagging commits as well. So we already have uh, free, free? Three, there we go. I'll use the correct terms. Uh, files for staging here. So we have our readme, we have our license, and we have our .editor config. And you'll see next to them there is this U, uh, which stands for untracked. We will get the same um, information if we use git status, which is a command to tell us the status of you know files within our repository. And it will say that we have three untracked files, .editor config, our license, and our readme as well. And we'll see that they are untracked. So this means that Git doesn't, well, it's not that Git doesn't know what they are because it knows that they're untracked. But these files are not part of our repository at this time. We need to tell Git that we actually want to track these files. And uh, the information down here actually gives us a hint of how we can do that. So we can use git add to track. So if we wanted to add all of them, we could do git add dot. Or if you just wanted to add one at a time, you could do say git add readme. Uh, and you can pass multiple files in here, so get a license, and that will add those two. So you can see these changes to be committed. It's registered these are new files. And up here in, a, in the corner, it's given a capital A, which means that they are, oh, index added. There we go. I was trying to think what the A actually stood for, but it means added. And then we could just get add dot to add the final one. So we now have our editor config in there as well. And again, we can confirm that using git status. If we wanted to unstage the files, you can see here, we can do git rm cache and then file, and that will unstage the file, but we're not going to do that here. We are going to commit them. So we can simply just do git commit. And when we do that, we'll be given an editor. Now this screen that appears will depend on your default terminal editor. Uh, so for me, that is nano. For you, it might be vim. Uh, if it is actually possible that it could load up a graphical one, something like Notepad or Gedit, if you have something like that configured. Uh, and you'll be given a lot of information in these comments. Um, so you'll have, you know, uh, please enter the commit message. Aligns with a hashtag will be ignored. So they are comments. And then it will give you basically the Git status as well. So it says what changes will be committed down here. So you have all that information available to you. And we could just do on this line, initial commit. You don't have to call it initial commit. This is a semi-standard. It's a standard that I like to keep up anyway. Um, and then we can just save those changes. And there we go. We now have three files changed, 45 insertions. And then we can see that we've created a mode. Now, I kind of forget what these numbers are. Uh, these first three are git specific 100 i think is added or created or something there's another one for deleted there's another one for modified 644 is the linux permissions i believe um so 64 i don't remember what 644 is off by heart but you don't ever really need to to pay attention to these numbers uh we can then confirm that these are committed by doing git status and we'll see that there is nothing to commit the working tree is clean it says so there's nothing you know that's been changed there's nothing new uh, everything that is there is just there i suppose we can uh, we can think of that we can also confirm that we get log which will now and it's given me my bleeding personal email address that's going to be fun to blur out every time uh, but you have the commit hash you have this head um which is the head commit or the latest commit in uh, a repository. And then we have our branch name here, which is main. We have the author, we have the date, and then we have the uh, the name of the commit itself, which is initial commit. If you wanted to add another file after this point, then we could create one. So I'm just gonna do uh, a very simple hello.py and then just print hello world like that and then we save it and then if we go into git status again we can see that the file is now untracked it makes no mention of the others because we haven't changed them if i was to change one of these uh, we can say now says hello run that command again we have uh, our untracked files as a separate section to changes not staged for commit 
Uh, so these are, you know, modified files. And then we can either add the file or restore the file if we wanted to discard the changes that we've made. If we wanted to, we can use git diff to then see uh, the diff in our changes. Uh, so we have a change in our readme. The readme is tracked, the hello.py is not, so it will not appear in our diff. We could just see the changes here. I might go more into diff a bit later. Uh, but that's a good resource for being able to see the changes. We could at this point do uh, git add dot to stage all the files. We could also simply do git commit and then dot and then use the dash m flag to set a message. So what we're doing here is we are committing changes to all currently tracked files and then dash m is a message. So our message would be second commit. And you'll notice when we do that that the hello pi has not been committed because it's not tracked. So that when you create a new file, you do have to do git add dot, and then we can do uh, git commit dash m to add the hello file. And this dash m also prevents the text editor from appearing, which is quite nice. And then you have these uh, changes again in here. If we were to do git log, we can see that there are now three commits here. So we have our add hello file, which is our latest commit. So it goes from newest to oldest commit. We have the second commit down here and we have the initial commit further down. Uh, yeah, one line down and then that's all of them. Before we end this video, I am going to talk about tagging. The tagging is particularly useful for various different reasons. You would normally tag some sort of release. So if you wanted to tag something with a version number, you could use a tag and then you could release using that tag, which is then, you know, bound to a specific commit. It just makes, you know, uh, versioning history quite a bit easier to manage. I felt a video on commits was the most appropriate time to talk about tagging. Uh, so we're going to do say git tag and then you provide the name of the tag. So we're going to use v 0.1.0 in this example and you do that. And then if you do git log again, we can see that our latest commit now has tag v 0.1.0. If we wanted to tag uh, a specific commit, like an earlier commit, then we could take this commit hash. And I hope this is the way around. So if we just wanted to say 0.0.1 and then we provide the commit hash, we then do git log again. And we can see that this earlier commit now has a tag of v 0.0.1 as well. So you can retroactively tag commits if you want or you can tag the latest by default. That's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Before I go, I wanna say a thank you to my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazard Washerman III for being so generous. If you wanna know how to create virtual environments in Python, then make sure to check out Monday's video. In the meantime, I'll see you around for whatever I do next.